don't understand why other reviewers and stuff gave me the impression that I was gonna read a super powered book. It kind of is, but it's not. It's not. Right, the naturals. Bloody glass, bloody bloody glass. <laughs> so, um, first book in the naturals series. I've heard a lot about these these books, this book, this series before. Um, mostly that is really, really good. Uh, it's that, well, teenage FBI is what I have in my head and it's it kind of is. It's that young adult mystery crime thing going on. However, <laughs> every time I've heard sp someone speak about this book or this series, um, it's like, I don't know if it's the phrasing of how they phrase it or if my mind just added stuff on or something, but the way I kind of had it in my mind was that these kids, the main characters as it were, that it's not just, well, it, it, it was kind of like they had superpowers like supernatural superpowers not just like superpowers well they do have superpowers but it's well it's powers that you can learn basically not supernatural superpowers there's no wicked magic stuff going on um <laughs> so for some reason i had it in my mind that they were going to be like these superhero teenage people that's helping the fbi which just the fact that it's teenagers uh, in a program in the FBI seems uh, uh, far-fetched. Um, I'm, I mean, I guess it could happen. I don't know how things go or not go. Um, but the way, because they're so young, the, the talents that they have seems very evolved for their ages. And it's, well, it, yeah, it's, it's a lot, but fun read. So, <laughs> backtracking, there's no supernatural superpowers, they do have talents, however, which I suppose could be called superpowers. Anyway, so um, we have Cassie, I don't know if the other books follow the other characters or if it's Cassie throughout, but in this one we have Cassie. So Cassie, her talent her superpower her talent i'm gonna say talent because superpower is just gonna make me think superheroes again anyway her talent is being a profiler so she can basically profile a person just by uh looking at them and hearing what they're saying and yeah, yeah the way profiling works why am i trying to explain things because that's never a good option <laughs> me explaining things no anyway so her talent is being a profiler and then we have other talents so there's uh, another king kid keen there's another kid called dean he's also a profiler he has been in this program this fbi program for uh slightly longer than anyone else he was the first one anyway then we have I'm trying to remember all the names. Does it say on here? No. Okay, so we have we have Michael who basically he reads emotions. He will read the emotional situation of the thing. We have Leah who is basically a human lie detector. Uh, and then we have Sloane who is, well, very good with numbers, statistical things and all that. She will say a lot of statistics she will throw out a lot of statistics willy-nilly i think that's all the kids why am i calling them kids they're like late teens but i feel like they're kids <laughs> anyway so cassie is the last one to enter this fbi program which the idea is that go through cold cases and like learn and and I guess enhance their talents and then eventually when they're actually older they will 
go into the actual FBI? That's my guess. I don't think it's actually mentioned properly as such. It's just that this is a program for young teens. Well, 17, 18. I don't know how old, old, old all of them are, but Cassie's 17. So in this first one, um, first we're just getting to know the program and the other people around well the kids and the adults let's just differentiate them all that the adults being um well the fbi agents there's also a like caretaker who's like a former military dude something something and while they're going through like their it's like basically they're going to school but they're going to school and learning murdery things <laughs> not how to murder but like going through eventually cold cases and learning how to enhance their talents that's that's basically it but um as it so happens a new killer strikes and this killer is a bit too close to home and now they're basically the kids must join forces and use all their talents to find this killer because it's a bit too close to home um i really enjoyed it it was so fast uh, i mean some some things are a bit far-fetched sure but it's the because we're seeing, I mean, uh, Jennifer Barnes, Jennifer Lynn Barnes, let's see what is said. So, Jennifer Lynn Barnes, she's written loads of books, but she also has advanced degrees in psychology, psychiatry, and cognitive science, and recently completed her PhD a year. So, I mean, she has the backup, I guess, uh, to write a book like this, and uh, this being the first one, of her books that I've uh, read, bloody amazing. Um, I was hooked. It's only like three hundred pages, not a lot. Yeah, but three hundred ten pages or something. Um, so it's it's quite short. It's YA. It's well, it's it's an easy read while still being a mystery to solve and. While I had my suspicions and guesses, I didn't see it coming, and I do enjoy that. I do enjoy that a lot. Yes, I am so excited to pick up the next one. The next one has like eight reservations on it, so I'm gonna have to wait. <laughs> I'm gonna have to wait until I get to the second book, but fine. Um, I might just have to rewatch this bit and then go into that, but there it is. It will just be a second for you, so I will catch you in a second. Killer Instinct. So, Killer Instinct. Book number two. We know the characters now from some from previous one. We're still learning things. There's so much more to learn about these not supernatural, natural superpower people. They don't have superpowers. Uh, I, I don't understand why other reviewers and stuff gave me the impression that I was gonna read a super powered book. It kind of is, but it's not. It's not. <laughs> There's murders and stuff. So, book number two, without spoiling it too much, but one of the characters, Dean, his dad um so the reason he's like in this program to begin with is because his dad was a well a serial killer yeah he um he did uh that yeah this just this um well some new bodies keep turning up and they just have that same um what's it called the mo thing um that Dean's dad had it's that same ritualistic thing they need to like start questioning Dean's dad Dean's dad's in prison by the way and he's well he's a bit of a psychopath sociopath all of those things the way this kept on guessing keep making you guess it was like so the murders don't really make much sense when you look at them like try to put them together because they seemingly seem to be made from the same person, but are they? 
are they really? This is what we need to find out. They seem to be, but they also don't seem to be. It kept you guessing. I bloody loved it. So now I'm gonna go into book three and I'm bloody excited. Here's what I'm thinking though, because in the first book we had, it was kind of revolving around, what's her name? Cassie, fuck's sake. It was kind of revolving around Cassie and like her mum's disappearance. Um, I guess it's still going under. So it's kind of revolving around that. So it's around Cassie and her thing. And this one, this one we had it revolving around Dean and his dad. So are we going to get something from the other characters? Because there's more characters. And from like book one and now book two, we've gotten more like from backstories around mostly Cassie and Dean. But also we get snippets from like the other characters. So are book three and four going to revolve around the other characters or is it going to be something else? Honestly, I don't mind either way because it's just the puzzle and the figuring things out along the way and it's it's the way it's you have this whole murdery crime thing without it and it's like bloody at times but not like like so intense you don't want to continue on because you feel like you're like in a, a, a head of a serial killer which they kind of do they kind of go in as profilers Cassie and Dean at least they kind of go in and put themselves in the like the killer's mind as it were and they use different tactics to do it I'm bloody loving it it's a good time it's murders but it's a good time <laughs> That sounds so wrong. Put it. I'm. I'm sticking to that. Yep. <laughs> We're all going to Vegas. <laughs> so basically, um, a bunch of murders happen, and they figure out that these murders, despite not really having anything in common, they have something in common. Um. So. Now, the kids, who are, by the way, now allowed to go on active cases, they're going to Vegas. And, <laughs> of course, there are strings attached to the whole thing. So, Vegas is where Sloan is from. Sloan, the numbers and statistics person. Um, she's basically Sheldon, I'm figuring out now. Yeah. Sheldon from Big Bang Theory, that's basically who Sloane is, more or less. Um, so, it's where she's from. So, obviously, they end up staying at the hotel that her dad owns. And her half-brother <laughs> um, has just recently found out about her and is trying to, you know, connect with her. And it's not going very well because... Not because of them, per se, but because of other reasons around them. Perfect, perfect. So, we have that going. As well as, um, we find out in the beginning that there's been a new development with Cassie's mum's case. And basically, they found a body. Yeah. But is it her? Is it? Is it not? <gasps> we don't. It was so much fun seeing the gang in a different environment from what we've seen like in the two previous books. So in the two previous books they're basically in their little house whereas now they're in this fancy suite uh, in Las Vegas because why not? Um, why not? Solving murders because why not? Well that is what they do there isn't it? <laughs> it was a lot of fun. There's just this thing so we find out is this spoilery maybe i'll put little spoilers on top now so you can look away if you wanna so we find out the murders that are happening right now are basically a cult yeah a cult 
and th there's this theme, there's this numerical theme to it, so they'll only happen on certain dates and between certain years. Now here's what uh, didn't make any sense to me. So they keep saying it's like every third year but then there's years when there's like multiple murders and there's supposed to be nine. It got me confused okay. It got me very confused and I don't know. I, I, the math. The math. Ha. Ah. Also, I hope we find this out in book for next book because in the end we meet this person I'm gonna say person we meet this person who is kind of connected to um, the cult and to Cassie and the gang and everyone but then we don't know what happens to this person what happens to this person I don't understand okay and spoiler <laughs> Um, I liked it, but there are some, well, numerical things that didn't make sense to me. So, is this where it all goes wrong for the series and me? I don't know. But I'm excited for book number four. So, there is that. There is that. The glares with these laminated books, I'm telling you, it's driving me crazy. Anyway, so, Bad Blood. Can I hold it in some way? No? Maybe? Oh, lightning! <laughs> Bad Blood, the fourth and last book in the Natural series by Jennifer L. Bond. Jennifer L. Bond? Jennifer Lynn Bond? What? Anyway, so, fourth and last book. All hell breaks loose. Yes! Yes it does, yes it does. This book brings a very big conclusion to the whole series. So this book brings in um, events that has happened in the previous books, but also like before the books were books. Does that make sense? That makes no sense. <laughs> it brings in events that happened before the books started. Uh, so we have the biggest showdown you could ever imagine and wow. Bloody bloody wow. Holy shit. Also from book three, we find out where that person I mentioned where they disappeared to. Um, yeah, so we, we do find out, but it, it takes a good long while before it, it comes up. I would have liked it from book three, thank you. <laughs> they, they could have just said, so and so goes into witness protection. <laughs> Because that's basically what happens. <laughs> Spoiler. Anyway, you don't know who the person is. <laughs> this book felt massive. As in, there are so many things that could have gone so, so wrong. So basically, they get this clue. Well, they figure out a clue. <laughs> they get a clue in book three and they figure it out in book four, which then leads them to this small town, I guess, where Cassie just happened to have spent a year of her life as a child with her mum and so many things. She doesn't remember it, but she, when she gets there, she starts to get like little memories, little snippets of stuff popping up. This town just happens to have a cult just living just outside of it, who just, you know, wanders in. <laughs> but of course, it's not just like a friendly small town. They have a fucking cult. <laughs> also, the town may not be as friendly <laughs> as you first think it is. And I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna leave it at that. I didn't know it, before I started it. It does say on the back, but I don't very often read the back. But the 4.5 novella 12 is also published in this book. Now, I haven't read it yet, but I am going to read it while I'm on the way to the to the library to return this book because I need to return it today because uh, I don't want the fees. No, no. Let's no, talk about 12. The 4.5 novella, um, I guess bonus kind of a deal to the natural series because the series, the four book series, it, it has a whole 
conclusion, summarization, everything. It's a complete little package. So the novella is basically just an added, added bonus chapter kind of video, although it's a lot longer than just the one chapter. So to summarize it, it's this. We are have jumped uh, a couple of years into the future. Um, Cassie and the gang are now, I want to say it was like five years since the previous book, so it's like the 23-ish, something like that. They say, I have forgotten. Anyway, they are not actually working for the FBI. Some of them are um, consultants and some of them are actually in FBI school thingamajing training to become proper agents and stuff. In this little novella, we kind of go into an old case. Well, not really. So there was a case in uh, book two. In the beginning of book two, they solved this cold case. Um, so the victim, as it were, um, which who was presumed dead and all that, but the, they find said victim, and now said victim is now grown up. Yes. So this victim, um, <laughs> I guess she's not, well, she is a victim again, I guess. Uh, anyway, she's now in school. What was she in? She's in, she, yeah, she's older now. And people have died, presumed suicides. But this girlie, who I forget her name, she believes this is all a setup. They did not commit suicide. And she has the evidence to prove it. Basically, she is a bit of a natural herself. She has done the calculation of a fall versus a jump. How would you, well, land? <laughs> um, and she kind of got a little peek of one of the victims and was like, this was not suicide. Yeah, so Cassie and the FBI gang, as we want to call them now, they kind of enter the picture and solve this case. <laughs> they solve this case so fast, hence novella size. So did we really need this novella? I want to say no. Also, I mean, don't get me wrong. It was a good novella. Everything was like, neatly packaged and wrapped up no, no no nothing nothing to complain about it wasn't a bad novella in itself it's just that did we need more it was fun to see the characters again but did we need to so it kind of felt a bit excessive i suppose although i did enjoy it and it was well written but i don't think we actually needed it